Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning. Um, the topic of uh, today, uh, we are going to look into the registration of Ingenious Act, REA 1967. Right? So, uh, it is, has been revised um, a few times and the latest revision is dated in 2015. So, uh, in order for us to um, learn or understand the role of Board of Engineers Malaysia, the responsibility of engineers, I think it's best for us to look into what is the Registration of Engineers Act all about. And just to note to you that um, I'm uh, heavily involved with the Board of Engineers Malaysia and uh, currently serve the Board of Engineers Malaysia as the committee member for examination and qualification as well as quality committee. Uh, I started to join or get involved with the Board of Engineers way back in 2007. So with uh, from there, I get myself involved with many uh, policies, many activities and uh, projects um, that are being um, conducted at the Board of Engineers Malaysia. I will explain to you why is it important to get yourself involved either with the uh, uh, Board of Engineers Malaysia or uh, with the Learned Society. Right. I plan to share with you the lecture for today for probably 40 minutes and uh, upon finishing the session probably it's best for us to discuss um, if you have any question you can uh, jot down your question at the chat box or later when i finish up the session you can uh, ask the question straight away so there are three main content in this particular session uh, first we are going to look at the introduction about BEM, we will look at the historical aspect of it, what is the function of BEM, the organizational structure, the role of BEM, and and uh, uh, everything related to the uh, regulatory aspect of Board of Engineers Malaysia. And then we will try to touch a little bit on the Registration of Engineers Act 1967, but we will look at the latest revision uh, that took place in 2015 and finally the last part of the lecture is to look into the categories of registration with board of engineers even though it is mentioned engineers but it's not just engineer being registered at the board of engineers measure right uh, based on the registration uh, of engineers act revision 2015 there are other engineering team that has already been registered with the board. Okay, in terms of the um, introduction section to the Board of Engineers Malaysia, as I highlighted, we will look into the historical background, how and when Board of Engineers being established. We will also focus on the functions of BEM and uh, the reason why I put up this because of the um, many of the Graduates, when they go to the industry, they don't really understand why is it important to register with the Board of Engineers. And some of them, um, the having uh, confusion with um, Board of Engineers Malaysia, with Learned Society. For example, like many of uh, the uh, graduates, they still confuse. Is it they have to register with IEM or they have to register with BEM? Right. So, and which one is compulsory? Which one is voluntary? And at the same time, we will look at the organizational structure and finally the role of BEM under the subtopic of introduction to BEM. In terms of the historical background, the Board of Engineers Malaysia is a statutory body or what we call it as a regulatory body constituted under the Registration of Engineers Act 1967, right? So, when we say Registration of Engineers Act, meaning that it is a part of the rules and regulation that has been passed through the Parliament way back in 
67. It's not just uh, any order of the government. It goes through the parliament and they get the act being approved in 1967. And the Board of Engineers Malaysia being formed in August 23, 1972. So imagine that um, the act being passed 1967, but the entity, the agency um, uh, being formed a uh, few years later, couple couple years later, about five years later, in to 1972. And the mandate, basically to carry out licensing of professional engineers and regulation of the profession. So, as we can see here, I purposely highlighted the word licensing, meaning that the Board of Engineers measure as a regulatory body, they regulate engineer, right? See, the regulates engineer in order to protect the public. There are many reasons why uh, this particular act being um, produced and being passed by the parliament in 1967 because there are so many uh, disasters related to uh, construction, buildings that are closely uh, affected the public, right? So, um, as I highlighted here, it is mandated to carry out licensing. So, any uh, uh, graduate engineer or people who get involved with engineering activities must get themselves registered and being regulated by Board of Engineers Malaysia. Right? That's about the historical background of Board of Engineers Malaysia. You can uh, get to know more about Board of Engineers Malaysia by visiting their website, okay, www.bem.gov.my. Okay, so or you just Google Board of Engineers Malaysia, you should be able to browse through their, in, their information in their website. A little bit on the functions of BEM, under the Registration of Engineers Act, Revision 2015, uh, if we look into Section 4, it clearly stated the functions of Board of Engineers Malaysia. So the first function is basically the Board of Engineers Malaysia will have to keep and maintain the register. So meaning that the registration of engineers, the registration of inspector of work, the registration of professional engineer, the registration of engineering consultancy practices or ECP and other uh, registered uh, person or registered entity has to be maintained and kept by the Board of Engineers Malaysia. Right? So they are the what we call it as the body to govern or to take care in terms of how many engineers that we have in Malaysia in civil engineering for example or in electrical engineering and this particular register is being used for a regulation of the activities of engineering at the same time it also being referred by um, other in for example like a ministry of industry trade and international so when they want to bring investors from overseas okay for example like when uh, uh, spirit aero system they want to build their factory in malaysia they want to know how many aeronautical engineer available how many aerospace engineer available how many materials engineer available how many manufacturing engineers available so that they want to when they went when they, they decided to come here they already make their study about whether Malaysia has sufficient number of engineering talent. And then at the same time, Board of Engineers also involved in the process of the application for registration. So as I said, there are many types of registration. There is a registration department at the Board of Engineers measure who take care in terms of the processing of the application. And at the same time, they also fix the skill of fees. The fees that being indicated or being charged by an engineering entity has its own rules, meaning that the engineer themselves, they cannot just simply uh, tell the client, okay, the uh, charge or the fees for my 
consultation uh, um, uh, process of uh, services is this much. There is a fixed scale of fees that being uh, put aside or being uh, there is a guideline in terms of how much the engineer can charge the client. Eh? So, it's, it, so that it can protect the, um, uh, the, the engineering um, activities in Malaysia. Okay, the same practice applies in other countries. For example, in, in the US or in Singapore, in uh, Australia, in the UK. So the governing body, the regulatory body um, involved or in charge with the engineering activities will, will set the scale of fees, right? So that in Malaysia also, the board of engineers, they have the responsibility to fix the scale of fees for engineering activities. At the same time, Board of Engineers Malaysia also responsible to accredit the engineering education. So they provide certification of quality for engineering education. For example, the program that you are undergoing now, the Bachelor of Aerospace Engineering, has recently been accredited by the Engineering Accreditation Council way back in 2018. So we have gone through seven series of accreditation exercise since the beginning of the program in 1996. And the latest accreditation exercise provided that the Bachelor of Aerospace Engineering with honors offered in Department of Aerospace Engineering, University Putra Malaysia, being given six years of accreditation since 2018, 2019, 2020, until 2024, students graduated from the program has already received accreditation. So you don't have to worry about the accreditation status for our program. So it has been conducted and the Board of Engineers Malaysia through engineering accreditation department, they provide certification of engineering education. Okay. At the same time, the fifth function of Board of Engineers Malaysia is to regulate the practice and conduct of the engineering profession. So, Board of Engineers Malaysia, they provide regulation for professional engineers, regulation for graduate engineers, the do and don'ts, uh, the regulation for engineering practices, the consultancy practices, the company, right? And what they can charge people, what they can uh, provide services and what they uh, do not, uh, cannot do in terms of the engineering profession. So what does that mean? Is that the uh, client or any parties can complain against engineer can complain against uh, the engineering consultancy practice, meaning that the public can um, uh, provide uh, um, issues. They, they, when, when there are issues coming out, they can file for complaint and, and Board of Engineer will provide uh, services to the public so that it, because the, the function of Board of Engineer is to protect the public. Okay, at the same time also, to regulate the engineer. They are not protecting the engineer. They are regulating the engineering profession. All right? So don't say that you, when you register yourself as an, uh, a registered engineer, you are being protected by the board of engineer. It's not. Eh? The board of engineer, the role of board of engineer is basically to protect the public. But they, at the same time, they regulate the engineering profession. Okay? I hope it make uh, the... Uh, um, information very clear here that the, bar, the Board of Engineers Malaysia, they regulate the practice and conduct of engineering profession. The next uh, function of Board of Engineer is to act as a stakeholder in a contract for professional engineering services when requested. Okay, For example, like a, a company, uh, engineering company, they want to build uh, tunnel um, in uh, very near to um, the um, community, right? They have to uh, uh, first talk with the authority, uh, the district office. They also have to talk with the uh, many other parties. Eh? So 
the board of engineer can also act as, as a stakeholder meaning that the professional sorry the uh, construction company they have to uh, engage with the board of engineers in order uh, to make the process much clearer in term of trying to protect the public as well as to regulate the profession okay when requested it's not compulsory but most of the time for big projects involved uh, with uh, the public the board of engineers malaysia will become one of the stakeholder including the uh, local government agency right and then it also conduct continuing professional development programs meaning that board of engineers uh, regularly provide continual uh, professional development program where they conduct training they conduct uh, awareness about the new uh, policy they also engage with the learned society most of the of the time the uh, training being conducted uh, in relation or in uh, collaboration with the learned society such as myset iem coam and, and other professional body so uh this is very important uh, where uh, under the board of engineers malaysia they believe in term of the uh, continual continuous professional development so cpd meaning that any engineers uh, when they uh, especially the professional engineer when they want to maintain their professional status they have to involve with uh, continuous professional development program so they get uh, involved in training they get involved with seminars they get involved with uh, uh, self study and so on and all of these uh, um, uh, activities contributed to points cpd points and uh, can be counted for their renewal of their professional status and the last function of bem is to conduct professional examination so at the um at the same time um under the professional exam ex examination for example like for uh, application for professional uh, engineer they we have a special uh, examination called professional assessment um, uh, examination pae meaning that uh, the uh, graduate engineer after gone through uh, a minimum of three years of experience when they have collected their sufficient uh, knowledge in terms of design and also management they can prepare their design report and experience report to be submitted to the board of engineers measure to be assessed in terms of their professional competency and upon doing that upon successful uh, application the graduate engineer can then be registered as a professional engineer and uh, to continue with that a professional engineer when they want to continue to upgrade themselves to become a professional engineer with practicing certificate they have to go through another set of examination to see whether they are competent enough to become the professional engineer with practicing certificate so only professional engineer with certi practicing certificate are allowed to submit drawings um, and to endorse the drawing to be submitted by the local authority all right and at the same time only professional engineer with practicing certificate or we call it as PEPC are allowed to open up a company meaning that an engineering company engineering consultancy practices must be um, led by an engineer professional engineer with practicing certificate registered with the board of engineers mission it's not just anybody can become a uh, can open up a an engineering company okay i hope you already clear about the functions of board of engineers mission because in order for you to understand in order for you to practice uh, as an engineer you need to know what is and what is the fun what are the functions of board of engineers malaysia and what are the things that being governed under the acts of registration of engineers let us continue all right next is the organizational structure as i said uh, earlier 
Board of Engineers Malaysia is a regulatory body. It's a statutory body. It is independent, right? Even though it is uh, uh, being under the Act, it is um, um, governed under the Ministry of Works, but it is like um, uh, a governing body that stand alone, right? Okay, so um, the Board of Engineers Malaysia normally uh, we, we it is uh, being regulated by the Minister of Work. So the patron of Board of Engineers Malaysia is the Minister of Work himself. Okay, and the president and the members of the board and as well as the registrar are being appointed by the Minister of Works. Okay, so uh, no. Traditionally, the president himself, the president of the Board of Engineers, is the director general of um, the um, Department of Works, eh? Kementerian Kerja Raya. Right? So, and under the Board of Engineers, we, we also have the secretariat, the permanent staff, I think roughly nearly 50 personnel now, headed by an executive director. So, under the president, we have the secretary of Board of Engineers Malaysia. We have the registrar. Normally, both of them are being appointed by the Minister of Works and uh, they are being seconded. So, they, they are normally work as uh, their uh, regular um, in, um, director, as uh, engineering director under the Department of Works and being seconded to serve uh, under the Board of Engineers Malaysia. And the board of um, board members eh, for board of engineers normally being appointed by uh, the minister of work. There are fourteen members uh, sh who shall be professional engineers. We also have representative from the board of architect. We also have representative from the board of surveyors that um, consists the fourteen members of. Um, uh, board of Engineers Malaysia, right? And um, in terms of the how Board of Engineers Malaysia works, even though we have a permanent secretariat, permanent staff secretariat, uh, the rest of the team, the rest of the members are uh, not working full time. Even the president, the secretary, the registrar, the board members, they are not working full time. They are um, is they are not full time members. There are they have their their own company. They have their own roles at their respective uh, ministries. Eh? And um, the uh, board of engineers Malaysia basically being the workforce. The workhorses are the standing committee. Okay, so we have uh, voluntary members from um, private companies, universities, from um, uh, individuals that. Um, um, take up positions in terms of uh, as a committee okay, or as a committee under the board of engineers Malaysia. So we have the management committee, we have engineers act committee. I'm a member of the examination and qualification committee. So it's uh, appointed yearly, right? And we serve at the board as a volunteer. So to get uh, involved in many uh, policy as well as activities. We also have Engineering Accreditation Council that look after the uh, accreditation for engineering programs and Engineering Technologies and Technician Accreditation Council they look after the engineering technology as well as uh, diploma of engineering and engineering technology programs and we also have application committee professional practice committee quality committee so look after the quality uh, we have the ISO 9000, ISO 9001, right? uh, quality management system for Board of Engineers Malaysia, and accredited checkers committee, scale office committee, training, education, IT publication, and national monitoring committee. So those 14 committees are the workhorses or the workforce for the Board of Engineers Malaysia. And they are being helped by the secretariat, right? So the secretariat uh, becoming the uh, take minutes and arrange meetings uh, to be decided. And 
all of the information or um, the discussion made at the standing committee later being decided in the board of engineers uh, meeting uh, to be endorsed by the president okay so it's not the committee to make the decision basically the committee make recommendation but the board council for bm will later endorse and approve any policy or changes that regulates the uh, engineering profession all right so that's a basically a, um, a brief information about how board of engineers malaysia works right what is the role of bem okay the board of engineers malaysia is the custodian and the administrator of the regulation of sorry registration of engineers act okay as um, uh, the act being enacted in 1967 it has been revised a couple of times normally every 10 years to 15 years and the latest one is 2015 and as a statutory body bm regulates all registered persons and engineering consultancy practices take note that bm is not an non governmental organization okay it is not an ngo it is also not a society okay it's not like you have a society registered register with the registration of society okay is also not an association so i hope you already clear in term of who is bm what is the function of bm how bm works in term of the organizational structure and the role of bem right i would like to share with you in term of the comparison between the learned society and board of engineers malaysia so we need to understand the different roles of board of engineers malaysia as well as the learned society so it is a statutory body its primary role to regulate the practice of engineering under the act and its provision to protect public interest the key word there is public interest eh? it is not protecting the engineer it is actually protecting the public against the engineer okay so you have to understand that right and registration with the board of engineer is mandatory it is mandatory okay meaning that is compulsory what happen if you don't register but yet you want to practice engineering so you are doing something against the law of the engineers act 1967 so you can get uh, caught you can be fined a minimum sorry a maximum of 50000 ringgit okay 50000 ringgit only <laughs> so it sounds uh, uh, small but it is it is huge eh 50000 ringgit uh, for a person who do not register with the board of engineer and yet taking practice of engineering okay whether you are the manager or you own your company or you are just uh, a person who try to do uh, a simple construction engineering construction as long as it involve the public and it involve engineering work practicing engineering work you must register yourself right so it is mandatory there is an act that govern it okay i hope you are now clear uh, why is it important to register with the board of engineers malaysia Okay, now let us look at another another entity called Malaysian Board of Technologies. I think last week, uh, in my introduction, I've um, introduced to you this uh, Malaysia Board of Technologies, Technologies or Lembaga Technologies Malaysia. It is also a statutory body, right? Constituted under the Technologies and Technician Act 2015. If you look carefully here, the word Technologies and Technician, there is no engineering term there, right? Meaning that is not engineering technologies, is not engineering technician. It is other than engineering activity. So technology is like um, uh, what uh, wood technology. 
for food technology, biotechnology, information technology, uh, software technology, uh, other technology that is not engineering, then it falls under the board of technologies. Okay, so it also has its own X and the Malaysian board of technologies being uh, located or being governed by the Ministry of Science technology and innovation whereas board of engineers malaysia being governed by the ministry of works because we are doing engineering works whereas the um, m board are governing the technology work okay and its primary role basically to recognize technologies and technician as professionals and we can say that the registration with the malaysian board of Technology is volume three. Okay, what happens if you as an engineer would like to become or register with the board of technologies? Is it allowable? Can engineer register as technologies? Okay, Shaira say yes. Okay, so the answer is yes. Eh? I myself uh, also registered as professional technologies with the board of technologies. And does it affect my career? The answer is no. If I don't register with the board of technologies, there's nothing happen. If I register with the board of technologies, I can get myself involved with other technologies, right? Other technologies and technicians. Right, as being highlighted here, is voluntary. But what happens if I don't register myself with the Board of Engineers? There's problem will occur. I cannot teach engineering. I cannot work with uh, uh, Department of Aerospace Engineering. I cannot work with um, uh, uh, Rolls-Royce. I cannot work with Airbus. I cannot work with uh, MRO company in Malaysia. I cannot work with the Civil Aviation Authority of Malaysia and so on and so forth because it practices engineering. Right, so registration with the board of technologies is voluntary. If you would like to get yourself involved with other technologies, this is the place where you register yourself. And I really encourage you, if you would like to expand your network, you want to uh, get in touch with other community in terms of the technologies and technician. This is the place, right? And uh, I myself already registered as the uh, graduate technologies at the same time I'm also the professional and uh, technologies registered with the Malaysian Board of Technologies right the next one are the society okay so we have here MySet the Malaysian Society for Engineering and Technology MySet being um, established in 2008 uh, it's uh, its uh, headquarters or head office is actually at the Faculty of Engineering. It, it is at the Tower Block. If you know the our Tower Block, um, it is at the level 2. We have the MySet office over there. Basically, MySet uh, born there. Eh? It, is, uh, uh, um, it is parked under... Uh, it is uh, situated at the Faculty of Engineering, uh, University of Putra Malaysia. And U UPM is uh, kind enough to allow MySet office to be situated at the Faculty of Engineering uh, because there are so many, uh, not just because uh, the members, uh, the committee for MySet are from UPM only, but it is uh, to show that UPM supporting a learned society, right? So who is MySet? MySet is basically a professional and learned body registered under Registrar of Society, the ROS, okay? And the purpose is to promote science and profession of engineering and technology. As you can see here, engineering technology, meaning that it governs or it cover the uh, engineering team. We have the engineers, we have the engineering technology, we have the technician, we have the allied professional like the architect, the surveyors and other technologies, they can become a member for my set, right? And basically, I don't have to read through all of this. Uh, basically, my set is just a platform for 
the engineering teams to work together, right? And um, uh, registration through to my set is voluntary. Similarly, like Mbot, I'm uh, just to let you know, I'm also a member of my set since the beginning, uh, 2008, and I'm currently the vice president for my set. That's why I want to promote my set. We have uh, my set student member division at UPM. My set also since 2008 provide a special uh, award for uh, excellent student award yes. since 2008 uh, we managed to get a sponsor from the company um, um, and they provide 1000 ringgit value of money okay, for excellent student award for uh, faculty of engineering student it's not just for aerospace is open to all eight programs. So since 2008, we already have uh, every year my set provide um, a award an award to uh, faculty of engineering uh, student. Um, at the same time, my set also provide their student award to many other university. For example, like University Technology Malaysia, we also have award for UITM student. We also have special award for UniKL student and special award for University Kebangsaan Malaysia student. So at in at any time every year, uh, those universities uh, providing uh, names to the MySet uh, to be given award. At least one student per university, and uh, every student will get a certificate. More importantly, they will get one thousand ringgit. The uh, how to get the award basically you have to register yourself as a student member you have to pay i think about 10 ringgit for life meaning that as long as you are a student you only pay 10 ringgit let's say you are you are bachelor degree student and then you continue doing your master you continue do your phd you only pay one of 10 ringgit okay and then um uh, it's only 10 ringgit, so get yourself registered. Eh? Um, and uh, you can also be uh, eligible to the MySet Award. At the same time, uh, just to, to make your uh, self uh, happy, is that in 2018, uh, MySet, through uh, one of uh, MySet uh, council, council member, uh, which is actually um, uh, Professor T.S. Riki, he himself uh, provide another thousand ringgit, just a special award for aerospace student, all right? Under my set, but it is award just for aerospace student. So, uh, at the Faculty of Engineering, we have two award from my set. One open for anybody, okay, excellent student award, and the other one thousand ringgit is just meant for aerospace student. So imagine you have forty to fifty numbers of student. Uh, just to compete among yourself to get that one thousand ringgit, compared to the do to the other awards for the faculty of engineering, okay, um, uh, nearly two hundred, sorry, nearly four hundred student for per batch. So you have to compete with other set of student, right? So get yourself registered as a student member if you uh, are interested. I can also uh, organize the registration, uh, but of course, uh, ten ringgit is just for to show that there is a commitment eh? okay and then the next one is IEM right maybe maybe some of you have already heard about institution of engineers Malaysia and uh, the engineer institution of engineers Malaysia is a professional and learned body it is also similar to my set regist registration with the uh, registrar of society to promote engineering profession okay so only engineers can register with IEM. Full stop. Okay, you if you are a technician, you cannot register with uh, IEM. You, if you are engineering technologist, you cannot register with IEM. Uh, only engineers. Okay, but for my set, it's open for the engineering community. And registration with IEM is voluntary. It's not compulsory. Okay, don't get confused. Registration with IEM is compulsory. It's not compulsory. Eh? And uh, at the same time, IEM also provide uh, award to uh, 
students and eh, UPM student also get award from IEM however there's no monetary eh, there's a no the student will get only a certificate of uh, award every year IEM provide certificate we ask IEM to provide money but somehow they do not want to give money eh. so similarly with uh, other university IEM only provide certificate of award they call it as a gold award but there's no goal in it it's just a piece of paper all right um but i also encourage you to get involved with iem okay there are many iem division i think Malay, uh, upm also have a student chapter of iem you can uh, try to log into uh, the website of iem and uh, we have many other lecturer also uh, get involved with iem and um, I do not know the the fees for IEM member. Eh? So you maybe want to, to look because I, I'm not a member of IEM. Um, uh, you can always look into the website of IEM to get to know more about this learned society. So the point I want to say here is that I want you to be able to distinguish between the role of Board of Engineers Malaysia, the role of um, Malaysian Board of Technologies, the role of MySet, the role of IEM and other society. Eh? The other uh, the other day, I provide you with uh, the other society outside Malaysia. Okay, um, For example, like we have the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, AIWA. Of course, be, to become a member, you have to pay in US dollar. You can also get involved with Royal Aeronautical Society in the UK. Of course, uh, you have to pay in uh, British pound every year. And at the same time, in Southeast Asia, we have this uh, entity called South East Asia Network on Aerospace Engineering, right? So, but it's not, um, it's not something that uh, there is no registration uh, individual registration, but it is actually open up in terms of the uh, only for uh, universities as well as institutions that offering engineering uh, program. Okay, let's move on to the second part of the lecture, the registration of Engineers Act 1967. Okay, so not uh, I'm not going to go into the uh, the depth of the prom, um, act, but just want to highlight why the act being enacted in 1967 okay before 1967 there was no engineers act okay because we 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 are uh, previously being colonized by um, colonized by the um, British okay in 1957 we get independence but we are still following the um, what we call it as the law in the UK. The acts, uh, um, we follow the British law before 1967. But uh, since there are so many um, disaster happen uh, due to man-made structures, the act was enacted in Malaysia due to uh, one building failure in Kuala Lumpur in the 1960s. Okay, So because we don't know where to blame how to charge uh, construction companies. So the parliament um, uh, um, uh, approved an act in 1967 uh, that uh, make it mandatory for the engineers to be regulated. Engineering activity to be regulated because we want to protect the public. Right? So since then, Many other similar acts related to the construction or building industry were enacted, such as the uh, Street Drainage and Building Act 19, 6, 1974, and we also have a Uniform Building by Law 1984, and uh, other acts that is related eh, to Town and Country Planning, Sewerage Services Act, Drainage Work, Local Government Act, Fire Services the Construction Industry Development Board Act, and so many other things, eh? like uh, uh, Occupational Safety and Health, Electricity Supply, Strata Title, Housing Development, Gas Supply, Water Supply, 
and many other acts that being enacted based on the Registration of Indigenous Act 1967. All of this just because to protect the, the public. Eh? So to safeguard public interest and not to safeguard the indigenous. Right? So remember, the Act, all of this Act is to safeguard public interest, public safety. Right? So if you would like to know more about the Registration of Indigenous Act 1967, the, the latest revision, 2015, you can easily download the laws uh, of Malaysia, Registration of Indigenous Act 1967, okay, as well as uh, the Registration of Indigenous Regulation 1990, and it has an uh, amendments of 2015. So they, they have it in the Board of Indigenous website. Okay, and in this particular um act they have um section explaining preliminary uh, board of engineers regist registration of engineers disciplinary committee cancellation removal reinstatement and general okay uh, we are not don't don't worry we are not going to go through all section i'm just telling you that whoever are interested to know more you can easily download the uh, registration of Indigenous Act 97 from the Board of Engineers website. Okay, earlier I've mentioned about the registration of engineers and at, uh, at some point I've also mentioned about registered person. In 2015, not only engineers being registered, but whoever personnel involved in engineering profession must be registered by the Board of Engineers Measure. So we call them as the registered person. So who are who and what are registered? Basically, graduate engineers. So people like you guys, when you graduate later on, you need to get your uh, certificate, your degree certificate being endorsed by professional engineer, okay? Um, and then uh, your transcript has to be endorsed by a professional engineer and your um, the identification card eh, being endorsed by a professional engineer. And uh, there are questions whether uh, a foreign National, okay, inter our international students, eh, some of you maybe end up working in Malaysia. Can you work in Malaysia? Can you register yourself with the Board of Engineers Malaysia? The answer is yes. You, you can register and you must register yourself with the Board of Engineers Malaysia if you want to work and practice engineering in Malaysia. If you want to work and practice engineering in your home country, you have to register yourself with the re uh, relevant uh, regulatory body in your respective country, right? For example, if you want to work in Australia, you have to register yourself with Ingenious Australia. If you want to work in Saudi Arabia, you, you have to uh, register yourself with the Saudi Council of Engineers, okay? So it depends on where you are uh, coming from. If you want to work anywhere in the world, you have to register yourself with the respective engineering body okay and the beauty of the uh, um, registration with the board of engineers malaysia because it allows mobility meaning that whoever register with the board of engineers malaysia they can also be uh, approved easily by the respective uh, or the equivalent regulatory body for example like engineers malaysia uh, when they want to work in Singapore, for example, they can easily transfer their registration. But of course, is uh, you you still have to register with Engineer Singapore, but you it, the the process is much easier. Eh? It is uh, seamless uh, in terms of the transition. Right at the same time, uh, professional engineers. Uh, I already explained in terms of how to become from graduate engineer to become a professional engineer. So you have to register yourself and accredited checkers okay accredited checkers basically 
uh, a company that uh, people uh, that uh, do uh, checking of other engineers work okay and then inspector of works inspector of works is basically people who work uh, at the technician level engineering technician level that work with the construction uh, industry and uh, at the same time uh, for engineering technician that works in other sector other engineering sector maybe manufacturing maybe uh, agriculture engineering and so on eh? so we also now register engineering technologies right so we have the engineering technician we have the engineering technologies and we have the engineer so in any engineering project we have the three the three community we have the technician we have the te engineering technologies we have the engineer okay so don't get confused about the technologies and the technician that do not come with engineering right so that one is under board of technology so as long as you involve with engineering you yourself have to uh, register with uh, the board of engineer major and then uh, the new category of registration professional engineers with practicing certificate this is an, a, a second level of professional engineer and whoever have this uh, certificate they can form a company open a, up a company and also do submission to the local authority right and of of course uh, the other aspect of registration is on business entities yes, like sole proprietorship partnership body corporate and multidisciplinary practice okay i have already highlighted in terms of the mobility just now right meaning that uh, a graduate engineer or professional engineer or any entities that already registered with the board of engineers measure are allowed for mobility okay under the international engineering alliance we have three um signet, uh, what we call it as the uh, agreement eh? we have the washington accord agreement we have the sydney accord agreement we also have the dublin accord agreement right so the washington accord agreement is for engineer right it's um basically um any engineering program in malaysia uh, because of malaysia has already signed an agreement uh, with uh, other countries we are already being accepted as a washington accord countries in 2008 if i'm not mistaken 2007 2008 okay and we got the registration 2009 we are already a washington accord countries meaning that any graduate engineer from malaysia can work in other countries okay uh, in uh, currently there are more than 23 countries uh, registered or a signatory for washington accord you can easily go into uh, international engineering alliance uh, and see who are the countries we have of course in southeast asia we have uh, malaysia singapore we um, indonesia is not a, a washington accord uh, signatory uh, we have uh, taiwan we have hong kong uh, we also have uh, china we have japan we have new zealand australia we have america we have uk we have um, some uh, i think pakistan uh, bangladesh uh, myanmar is already being accepted um, some african countries i can't remember and also some uh, countries from the europe as well as uh, uh, Ireland and uh, there are many other countries there are more than 23 countries what is important here is that the uh, the engineering degree program accredited by the board of engineers Malaysia is also approved by other country the, meaning that the degree that you obtain from UPM because UPM already got obtained accreditation from the board of engineers Malaysia you can easily work in new zealand for example they do not have uh, they, they 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 recognize the degree that you obtain from malaysia okay similarly with with other countries that are washington accord signatory okay similarly with engineering technologies 
uh, through Sydney Accord and Engineering Technician through the Dublin Accord. So, for your information, uh, Malaysia has already a, become a signatory for all accord uh, for engineer, engineering technologies and engineering technician. So, you do not have to worry uh, about your status of degree, what, you, what is more important here to get your, yourself registered and to get yourself recognized um, to work anywhere in the world. Um, Registration is manda mandatory, right? Uh, just want to uh, further firm up in terms of the uh, graduate engineer, okay? In section 72A, is uh, registered with the board, may subject to section 8, okay? As, as highlighted, the act is protecting the, uh, protecting the public and regulating the uh, profession, right? So, uh, the graduate engineer can take up employment which require him to perform professional engineering services. Similarly, for engineering technologies, okay, when they register with the board, they can take up employment and they can also perform engineering, professional engineering services, right? And inspector of work or engineering technician, they can perform engineering services to assist professional engineer in supervision of engineering works, okay? So, they, these are the uh, part of the uh, regulation. Okay, is the REA to protect the engineering profession and the business or, okay, I just uh, highlight here that no law should be specifically to protect the interest of a profession. So, because the Act itself clearly stated that it is protecting the public, it's not protecting the company, it's not protecting the business, it's not protecting the engineers. What happened uh, recently at the uh, the crane disaster, right? The crane disaster just nearby in Kuala Lumpur, right? Uh, this is the third time um, accident happened there. Is it someone, is it the law try to protect the profession, the engineers? Is it the law try to protect the businesses? No, eh? there are people dies, okay, because we want to protect the public so we do not want uh, the public to suffer but we have to make sure someone to be held responsible right it happened again and again and again and the act itself is to protect the public and society in relation to the services provided by engineers and the act therefore is to regulate the performance of engineers because the Graduate engineer, when you register, it's a registration for life. Okay, but if you do something wrong, your registration can be revoked, meaning that can be uh, cancelled. Okay, and at the same time, the professional engineer themselves, they have to renew their professional status every year. The license, and the license has to be renewed every year. Okay, if someone com file a complaint, you are being uh, you are being charged for something, negligence, and so on, you can be revoked from your professional status, right? And uh, engineers to ensure high level of professionalism in the delivery of services, right? And the, the provision of the REA to regulate the engineers in order to protect the public has, in fact, indirectly made engineering an exclusive profession and an exclusive professional engineering services business, right? So, again, I hope you already understand that the act is to pro is not to protect the engineering profession and not to protect the business. It is to protect the safeguard the public interest. Okay, the act specifies that only registered engineer. Only registered engineering technologies and only registered inspector of works can provide professional engineering services. So if you don't register, you are not allowed to work. Maybe some of you said, oh, my brother already worked at a kilang uh, or factory. He didn't register. He's an engineer. Is it okay? The answer is okay as long as he's not being caught. Right? 
So similarly, like you are you are riding your motorbike or riding your uh, driving your car, you go through red lights and uh, speeding up uh, in highways. Is okay, okay in bracket, as long as you do not being caught by the JPJ or police, right? So it is, uh, but it means that it's not okay. Eh? Meaning that you. Uh, have to become legal, legal in such way that uh, you have to be registered. Uh, as if you have extra money, fifty thousand ringgit in your pocket, you can by all means you can just uh, uh, practice engineering. You do not have to register yourself, right? So uh, more and more companies already put up um, advertisement that require registration with the Board of Engineers Malaysia. Uh, for example, like uh, the Uh, Malaysia Airport um, Berhad, okay, if you want to work in the airport, um, as an engineer over there, when you submit your application, you have to also include your registration with the Board of Engineers Malaysia. Okay, if not, according to the General Manager of uh, Malaysia Airport, Engineer Khairia, uh, my friend over there, she said, we will just throw the application into the bin. Okay, because it is not, uh, you are not registered with the board. Similarly, with uh, in uh, other aerospace company, for example, like Galaxy Aerospace in Subang, um, I I made a, a promotion promotional activities with the board of engineers, uh, and we visited uh, Galaxy Aerospace in 2018, and we the general manager uh, at that time. Um, Mentioned about they also impose such regulation of registration by the Board of Engineers Malaysia because the Civil Aviation Authority Malaysia CAM also uh, impose the same thing. Meaning that uh, when Galaxy Aerospace would like to renew their uh, approved training organization, they want to uh, renew their. Approve uh, design organization and uh, approve maintenance organization with the Civil Aviation Authority Malaysia. The CAAM Malaysia would like to see the personnel working at Galaxy Aerospace are registered with the Board of Engineers Malaysia. So, in other words, you more and more companies and uh, industry already um, implementing uh, the uh, registration of Engineers Act. Okay, so at the moment, the board of engineers has not. Uh, they are still in the mode of uh, giving awareness, try to uh, provide uh, information to the public, and try to be nice. Eh? So we never know. Uh, maybe in a couple of years' time, uh, they will um, impose the such regulation. They can go to a company and and try to. Uh, ask whether the people or engineers are registered with the with the uh, board of engineers or not. Okay. All right, and then this is uh, just an explanation about engineering works. What does it mean? It means all works which include any publicly or privately owned public utilities, eh? public or private, and eh? both. Eh? Even though you have your you are doing uh, construction at your house. You have to obey the rules and regulation for engineering works, okay? And uh, anything that uh, uh, buildings, machine, equipment, processors, work or project that requires the application of engineering principle and data. That's what we mean as engineering works. And professional engineering services means engineering services and advice. Just do the talking, uh, consultation works in connection. With any feasibility study, planning, survey, design, construction, commissioning, and so on and so forth, approved by the Board of Engineers Malaysia. Right, so you have to make clear about the engineering works and professional engineering services that being stated in the registration of engineers act. Okay, and this is just the purpose of the act again to protect the public. Okay. And to create regulatory body and to set regulation eh, in, um, that is governed by the Act itself. How does BM regulates? It will take up um, action upon receiving complaints. 
if someone complain uh, from the public or another engineer complain against another engineer, all right, there will be a hearing at the Board of Engineers Malaysia and uh, the Board of Engineers Malaysia will uh, take up the, uh, we call the respective pe uh, person involved and if it is beyond, uh, if the parties involved would like to take it up to the civil court, uh, they will go into another level. But first, uh, Board of Engineers Malaysia will will uh, try to resolve um, it against the complaints. Eh? Try to do, there, there will be investigation, investigating committee. Eh? So like a, um, a division under Board of Engineers Malaysia. And uh, BEM itself refrain from active policing, uh, policing enforcement. They don't do rushing. They don't uh, go and uh, try to just knock down uh, doors of companies to find out who has not been registered. So, because the we believe that the profession is an honorable profession. So next week, inshallah, I will explain to you about the moral ethics and regulation. So, why I say that it is an honorable profession. Becoming an engineer is uh, full of responsibility. Eh? And just like others, eh, that uphold firmly to its code of conduct. There is a code of conduct of engineers capable of delivering services with high level of professionalism. Okay, so that's why if you are working with the government sector, if you are lucky enough to work under the uh, Surajaya Perkhidmatan Awam as an engineer, you will receive a 5%, uh, we call it as a critical allowance. 5% yeah? of your, of, of your uh, basic salary. It's not that much. If you earn 1,000 ringgit, you will get 50 ringgit uh, allowances uh, just to cover for your professionalism, right? If you earn 10,000 ringgit, it is a, you can calculate more. It's 500 ringgit. Eh? So you can get uh, some uh, certain amount of uh, professional um, allowances, okay? So, with high levels of self-governance and self-regulatory commitment. So, engineers um, can be self-governance and self-regulatory. Okay. What has BM done for registered person? As um, all this while from the beginning until now, I keep on saying to protect the public safety, to protect, the, to safeguard the public. Why we register ourselves? Okay. Why engineer has to register? What are the benefits? Okay, so the registration of Engineers Act and the Board of Engineers is not for the direct benefit of the registered person and the ECPs, the Engineering Consultancy Practices. The affirmative actions instead of the policy approach of BM has indirectly resulted in benefits to the registered person. Some example here, registered qualified person are held in high esteem by the public. So the public perception towards the engineers they look high at the engineers because we are highly regulated. It's not just simply becoming um, a manager, but it's, it's something that uh, being highly respected. Okay? The profession and business are exclusive. If you do not hold a, a professional engineers with a certificate of practicing, you cannot open an engineering firm. So, uh, for example, like an accountant, they cannot open up an uh, engineering firm unless they partner with uh, uh, someone, eh, an engineer, right? And the engineering courses are recognized worldwide, as I explained earlier, Washington Accord, Dublin Accord, and Sydney Accord. So, there will be allow, uh, we allow engineering mobility. Professional from outside Malaysia is also... Uh, allowable to work in Malaysia. Now, our country, Malaysia, has uh, implement an open policy, meaning that engineers from other countries, other nationals, are allowed to work in Malaysia, but they have to register with the Board of Engineers Malaysia. And our professional engineer uh, status being accepted by other countries, for example, like you can also uh, become ASEAN Chartered Professional Engineer if you want to work uh, uh, in a project in Thailand or Indonesia or in uh, other countries uh, in, in Southeast Asia, okay? Right? 
we are in our final uh, stage of our uh, i hope you are still alert about uh, the lecture okay it's already more than uh, one hour now one hour 15 minutes eh? we we will look a little bit on the category and statistics just uh, one slide to show the current statistic of registration okay i managed to gather the information since 2015 until 2021 this is the latest um, that i got uh, from uh, the website from board of indians malaysia last night so you can see here the numbers are growing eh, for professional engineer with practicing certificate the 2000 uh, why 2015 we do not have because this is the point where we introduce the second level for professional engineer with practicing certificate so, so earlier it is 16000 everybody are professional engineer and by 2016 uh, those professional engineer are being invited to become professional engineer with practicing certificate that's why the numbers are shifting towards PEPC and uh, and uh, of course the PE when they um, gain enough experience they can then take up an examination to become PEPC eh? so if you can see here compared to the population of Malaysia we are still very far behind eh? we have nearly 35 million uh, people in Malaysia but yet we only have roughly about 15,000 professional engineer and only 10,000 Uh, sorry, 4,000, 5,000 professional engineer and 10,000 professional engineer with practicing certificate. So, we are still far behind compared to uh, more developed country. Eh? So, uh, that's why we need more and more uh, people to get registered and to get yourself be to become a professional engineer. I hope everybody would like to aim. Eh? All of you will become a professional engineer uh, yourself. Eh, whether um, or at least you just register yourself as a graduate engineer only 50 ringgit for the rest uh, for for your for your career eh, for only 50 ringgit you do not have to be new every year but for professional engineer you have to gain you have to compile your experience eh, to become a professional engineer okay and we also have nearly 1000 143000 graduate engineer right So hopefully we can get uh, up till 200,000 by year 2030. Eh? It's quite slow. Uh, there are many engineers, uh, so-called engineers, they don't register themselves. They are they say that they are not uh, an engineer, eh? but in their uh, name card they put an engineer, which is wrong. Eh? Okay, we also have uh, numbers of uh, engineering technologies, inspector of works, and other. Uh, company, eh, the business entity, right? That's all for my sharing. Um, I've been talking for more than uh, one hour now, right? So I will stop sharing and I would like to open up for Q and A. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Bye bye.